no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed. So much that show me thought her eyes had lost her tongue. For she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me. Show the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lords ring. Why? He sent her none. I am the man. If it be so, as it is, Poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see. Thou art a wickedness. Wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper faults in women's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not me. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master loves her dearly. And I, poor monster, fawned as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now will last the day. What thriftless sighs shall Poor Olivia, breathe. Oh, time, thou must untangle this. Not I. It is too hard. And not for me to untie. Greetings. I am Vivan from AG, and I will be performing one of William Shakespeare's most iconic monologues. All the world's a stage in the play as you like it. Act 2, Scene 7 All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages at first. The infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy with a satchel and a shining morning face, creeping like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow. And then the soldier with his full of strange, strange oaths 
and bearded like the par, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation, even in the cannon's mouth. Then injustice, in its fair round belly and gold lined cape on, with eyes severe and beard with a formal cut to with making wise saws and modern instances and so he plays his part the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouches at sides his youthful horse well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shrank and his big manly voice turning against Charles Drebber pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange and eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything good morning all my name is Ivan Chadda i am from 7th edge I would like to share a soliloquy written by William Shakespeare with you. To be or not to be, that is the question. But this is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by imposing end them to die no more and by a sleep to say we could end the heartache and a thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to just a consummation devoutly to be wished to die to sleep to sleep a chance to dream In that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off the mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the spans of despised love, the laws delay, the insolence of office. The, the patient merit of the unworthy take, take when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. To grant who would fardels bear to grant and sweat under a weary life. But that the death, that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will. and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great, great pitch and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry, 
and loose the name of action. Thank you. I'm Silvia Sachdev and I'll be enacting Beatrice's monologue from Shakespeare's play All Ado About Nothing, Act 2, Scene 1. more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending in that way, for it is said, God sends a cursed cow short horns, but for a cow too cursed, God shall send none. So, by being too cursed, God shall send me no horns. Just if he send me no husband, for the which blessing I am at him upon my knees every morning and evening, Lord. I cannot endure a husband with a beard on his face. I had rather lie in the woolen. Though I may light on a husband that hath no beard on his face. What should I do with him? Dress him in my apparels? And make him my waiting gentlewoman? He that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that hath a beard is more than a youth. And he that is more than a youth is not for me. And he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Therefore, I will even take six pence in the earnest of beer herd and lead his apes into hell. <sighs> Will then I go into hell? No, but to the gate. And there the devil meet me like an old cookhead with horns on his head and say, Beatrice, go to heaven. Go to heaven, Beatrice. Hell is no place for you maids. <sighs> so I deliver up my maids Await St. Peter for the heavens. He shows me where the bachelors sit and we live as merry as a day is long. Thank you. <laughs>